Yes, welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily. My name's Austin. There is so much happening right now in the cryptocurrency space that have huge implications for the future. In today's video, I wanna share that with you. So like always, check the timestamps down below, smush that like button, and let's jump in, starting with the latest numbers on inflation. Inflation rose 8.6% in May, the highest since 1981. That means the purchasing power of your dollar in your bank account is getting weaker. The US dollar continues to be inflated away, as opposed to Bitcoin, a finite supply. The iPhone 4, which would have cost you 2,857 Bitcoin back in the day when released, now only costs you 0.02 Bitcoin for the iPhone 13. Eye-opening. Embrace deflation and adopt Bitcoin. How this affects you is even though Bitcoin very volatile day to day, we are trending up long term. Now, short term, this could be bearish as the Fed will see this as an even greater reason to get more aggressive when raising rates. So anything could happen in this next year, but when in doubt, zoom out and think long term. And next up, huge piece of long term fundamental news for awareness. The UFC has just tapped VeChain as its official layer one blockchain partner. The multi-year deal was reportedly worth $100 million. Here are the details. VeChain has signed on to be the first official layer one or base layer blockchain partner for the mixed martial arts organization UFC. According to an announcement post, the partnership includes a variety of integrations into UFC live events and original content for its digital and social media channels. And if VeChain paid $100 million, they're going to get a lot of coverage for a minimum of the next five years. What else will this collaboration look like over the next half decade for VeChain? Well, the two will collaborate on a range of original content featuring UFC talent and athletes, and an annual brand ambassador fund will offer paid marketing opportunities to UFC athletes. So essentially, the fighters in the UFC will be educating, teaching, making original content, essentially galvanizing the audience to understand crypto and VeChain. In a final direct quote from Sonny Liu, VeChain founder, it is a historic moment when VeChain, the layer one public blockchain with the most enterprise adoption, joins forces with the fastest growing sport to raise awareness that blockchain technology is critical in helping deliver major global objectives such as sustainability. If you like VeChain, you like this, and I would think this would do, I mean, don't expect this to do anything for VeChain's price short term or in a bear market, but think of the awareness long term. And next up, probably the biggest thing happening in our industry is the cryptocurrency regulation going through Congress right now. It is a make or break moment for this industry. For a recap on what that regulation is, what it means to you as a crypto holder, seek out this video, the largest cryptocurrency regulation. It just got introduced in this last week. And to speak on this, Sam Bankman-Fried, crypto thought leader, gives his take on this crypto bill. Listen to him explain why he likes it only because regulation is inevitable. And if it's inevitable, he'd rather a department like the CFTC over the SEC handle it like this bill suggests. Watch this. One of the reasons the exchanges have been reluctant to interact with the crypto community has been the uncertainty around the regulatory yep. situation. Now, Senators Gillibrand and Loomis just introduced the bill, and it looks very clear to me that the CFTC in their bill is going to be the primary regulator. The crypto community seems very happy about that. They seem to have soured a little bit on Chairman Gensler at the SEC. What's your evaluation of this bill? Is this good for the crypto community? So I think like getting regulatory clarity is huge, and I think it's good for everyone. I think it gives customer protection that we're missing right now, real federal oversight, protection against financial crimes, against systemic risk, and at the same time, allows the industry to move back onshore and bring real liquidity to U.S. markets. So I think it's a win-win to have federal oversight. You know, from my perspective, look, it could come from the SEC, it could come from the CFTC or some combination. The important thing is that it happened. So I, I welcome the efforts, you know, from from, you know, the cinema, you know, Joel Brand, or, uh, sorry, the, the Lums, Jim, Joel Brand effort there. You know, the, the efforts that I know, you know, a number of other people have been putting in. To this. Is, is the CFTC a more sympathetic audience, do you think? The crypto community seems to think so. So they've certainly had more experience, I think, with the asset class. When you look at, you know, Bitcoin futures have been live on CFTC venues for a few years. So I think that they've built up a lot of knowledge about the industry. And I think they've been engaging a lot with the uh, industry and community over the last you know, year or so and, and have built up some sympathy there. 
you know, again, in the end, what matters to me is the policy rather than whatever agency is behind it. But I definitely think that they've been taking a really constructive approach. Okay, very interesting. Give me your thoughts on this down below. Did you like this? Do you have a comment on this? But let's keep moving. And next up, MasterCard to allow 2.9 billion cardholders to make direct NFT purchases. So when you hear people talk about adoption, I think this is what they mean. The financial service provider announced that it has been working on expanding their payments networks to NFTs over this last year. The firm has partnered with a number of leading NFT marketplaces to allow 2.9 billion cardholders to make direct NFT purchases without buying crypto first. And even though the customers don't need to hold crypto first, somebody will in order to purchase these NFTs, and that's great for crypto. In a direct quote from MasterCard, these integrations are designed to make crypto more accessible and help the NFT ecosystem keep growing, innovating, and bringing in more fans. MasterCard stated that it has partnered with multiple NFT marketplaces, namely Immutable X, Candy Digital, The Sandbox, Mintable, Spring, Nifty Gateway, and Web3 infrastructure provider MoonPay to make this happen. So MasterCard is going all in in integration for these Web3 platforms. I like that. And next up, I wanna talk about altcoins like Chainlink, Avalanche, the Flow blockchain. But first, I wanna give a big shout out to sponsor of the channel, the FTX app. Now, you probably know the FTX app as one of the most respected, fully regulated exchanges in the US with fees up to 85% cheaper than competitors and is trusted by millions of users. Now, there is a special promotion running right now. Get up to $100 in crypto for free with Altcoin Daily by using code Altcoin Daily when you sign up and slash or this QR code right now. So, how do you do it? How do you get free crypto with Altcoin Daily? You are going to download the app, use our code, then fund your account, start trading, and then earn up to $100 in crypto. When you trade $100 or more, you'll earn 10 bucks. When you trade $500 or more, you'll earn 50 bucks in crypto. And when you trade $1,000 or more, then you can earn $100 free in cryptocurrency. Get started today. There's a link down below. That's ftx.us slash partners slash altcoin daily. Take advantage, link down below. And next up, Mattel to release Cryptoys NFTs on the Flow blockchain, the global toy company is partnering with OnChain Studios to bring its iconic IP to the metaverse. So this is a big win for Flow because Mattel chose to build on them. In a direct quote from the Mattel president, we see incredible opportunity in the metaverse for our cherished brands and iconic IP. And their first foray into Web3 will be called Cryptoys. Cryptoys, in their first iteration at least, are described as interactive animal NFTs that can be accessorized with additional NFTs of hats, shoes, and glasses. Like Barbie or like American Girl dolls, Cryptoys will be a customizable collectible, but on the blockchain. There will also be an expansive and playable metaverse to come. Cool. So that's the news. Good for Flow. And next up, Chainlink making moves. Chainlink brings their keepers and verifiable random function to the Avalanche blockchain. Avalab's CEO said that this will simplify the experience of Avalanche developers and users. And if you're wondering what keepers are, what VRF is, Chainlink keepers will enable developers to automate smart contract functions in a decentralized manner. And on the other hand, Chainlink VRF will provide a random number generator, RNG, that can be used in many decentralized applications, dApps, that require randomness. So this will make developers' lives so much easier. In a direct quote, the Avalanche community is full of tireless builders and their ability to rapidly build and ship applications at scale just became easier with Chainlink. And next piece of news for ChillChat, a crypto project I'm invested in, ChillChat raises $8.35 million in seed rounds for a social create to earn metaverse and why this was significant to me is because this round was led by FTX Ventures and also Crypto.com Capital following a 1.85 million seed equity round led by Solana Ventures. So a lot of big names backing this project. And with these fresh funds, ChillChat will continue to develop its social metaverse platform 
where community members can easily create their own worlds, characters, items, and pets, all which can be instantly minted as NFTs. In a direct quote from Crypto.com on why they chose this project, Chill Chat's combination of easy-to-use tools and broad distribution platform will develop new create-to-earn opportunities for creators to make money and provide vast collections of exciting worlds for gamers to explore. So cool to see what these major funds are doing, how they're looking, what they're looking for in the space. And next piece of news in the celebrity NFT space, Seth Green pays $300,000 to recover his stolen board ape Ethereum NFT. So just as a reminder, Seth Green owned this NFT. He got fished. He clicked a link so the hacker was able to steal it. And then that hacker quickly sold it to some random person, and Green has been trying to get it back. Well, Green reportedly paid 165 Ethereum to get it back. And just for perspective, he originally purchased the NFT for just $200,000. And now he paid almost $300,000 to get the same NFT. Of course, why this makes news is because anybody that owns the Bored Ape NFT, you have IP rights to use the name, likeness, image, and do whatever you want. And that specific board ape was the star of Green's upcoming TV show, White Horse Tavern. So we really needed that back, and now he has it. All is right in Green's world. Okay, that is the video. My name's Austin. Like always, see you tomorrow.